Uh, it's actually blue in that eye. I think I was thinking uh, about the tutorial, particularly to draw eyes, but there's so many of them already. Um, and to be honest, it's quite easy. You just have to copy, <laughs> copy what you see. And um, so here, for example, I've done it in completely wrong place. And this is not good, but um, that's all right. I'm gonna correct it now. So I'm gonna get some brown here, and um, hmm, how about adding this blue in there? I'm not gonna be too mad trying to copy every single detail. Um, okay. Here's my Gerald pastel again because I want to do his dark, dark. I think uh, the, the right word is pupils. Yeah. This black thing which is inside our eye. Okay. And here with his lovely eyes I could see the lighter area around the bluish and the bluish right in the corner of the eyes if you have a look closely you can see that kind of bluish color as well like I'm going to be doing pink in here but I think in the beginning maybe it's a bit blue that's bead under the eyes a lot of times with animals you will see under the eyes bead is light color usually pink or blue so I am going to actually do both of them and pink and blue 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 I even will add a bit of white um, right. When you work with the details, what you will, what will be very handy for you are the pencils, colored pencils. They work perfectly on this paper. And plus, they are quite firm and very thin. You can sharpen them up to the very thin lines. So, for example, now I've done the eyes and I feel like I would like this line to be a bit narrower. And I may well struggle to do it with the pastel. So, I just gently go with this pencil closer to this line. And also, for example, if I want to be very detailed, I could do these little lines on the eyelash. If you will have a look very close, you can see these little lights on the, on the eyelash. That's it. And um, once again, I would say that it needs even more highlight over here. That's it, as well as here, the highlights and shades is that what gives us like, you know, this uh, so-called true to life painting artwork. By the way, did you know that the pastel drawing could be called pastel painting as well? when the whole surface is covered with the color properly so and you cannot see through the color paper a lot of times when people work with the pastel it's only uh, uh, you can see the paper through 
it's it's quite popular with the pastel and I think it, it initially was like this everywhere um, right going back to the drawing uh, now I am working with the details as I said before uh, where's the details you can use again your pastel pencils uh, but pastel pencils are a bit tricky yeah so we know that the pastel pencils I'll show you here yeah so I sharpen them with the that Stanley knife and um, the, it's not very easy to make them thin you can thin them on a like kind of another piece of pastel paper to make them thin but it's kind of you don't want to waste them as well too much uh, but also again going back to the colored pencils uh, the colored pencils which are working really nice on the on the Fisher 400 as well on the um, Clairefontaine which we will be working later like I'm using two of those I'm pretty sure that probably quite a lot of um, other brands that would be perfect so the brand I'm using is Faber Castell and also the other one which I showed to you is Derivant. Um, here is the Faber Castell, one of the pencils. And what I'm going to do is this: if you will magnify your mirror card, uh, when we work with the details, you will see he's got this fine, lovely hair. And this pencil do just the job. If you will have a look. How lovely you can create little hair with this pencil. So we're working on the top of pastel. So we already got the background with the right color we need. And just going in the top would give us this beautiful look of his lovely short hair. And we're getting closer to the nose and again what we're doing here is looking the direction of the hair little little lines little little lines and with this pencil as well like so I chose the main color I think mostly in this um, in his fur I can see that a it may be a few colors you will need to use That's it. So I'd say, oh, he's got the little lovely face. So there's a shape. I actually didn't notice it when I um, it wasn't magnified the picture. But now when I magnify the picture, I notice this kind of you know whiskers area, which I didn't see before. I'm going to use black as well, black pencil, and um, work a bit more with this whiskers area. I'm not drawing whiskers just yet. Eyebrows, whiskers, all those leave for the last moment. Don't worry about them at all. Uh, what I'm going to do now is take black um, for his nose and work a bit more with his nose. His nose needs a bit more highlight and um, get a bit more detailed. Sometimes it's tricky when you magnify the picture and try to work with the details. You may as well want to make them bigger on your drawing. So you have to be careful and think if you need to bring picture back from magnifying bring it back I just done it now because I got a bit confused oh, and the cute cute little noses how is your nose coming up what I do I do a black outline if you will have a look there is a black outline around his nose and now I'm gonna take um, just a nice kind of cream color and try to go at the top 
and then give straight away the feel of um, the depth, the volume. I've done highlights before, so now I may even go for some brighter little bits where he's definitely having one in here. That's it, and then one in here. That's it, and then a couple at the top here. Make it a bit alive. And what else? is there's a nice quite obvious line I would say around his nose that the yellowish not yellowish but um, what is it beige ivory color if you could see it and since again it's it's come up a bit too big too thick and you know what to do we need to take our colored pencils when we've got the situation like this and just gently bring it back. Choose the right color and bring it back. Like this. You see? Just like this. Hmm. Okay. And I even Go a bit more with the pencils here. Um, I quite like to draw with a co with colored pencils on the on the top of pastels. It's quite cool to create these little details. Even though even though these are colored pencils, you still can blend them. And do not go too mad. Do not put too much pressure on the pencils, on pastel pencils, on uh, just the right. You need to find just the right one. Not too light, not too hard. Find the right one and that will be perfect. Right, okay, so I'm going to do a few more lines under his eye with this orange color. And here and um, I think mm, blue, I would say blue a bit more blue in here mm -hmm. right, uh, it's looking good, it's looking good um, since we're here, I'm going to show you how to remove uh, how to remove uh, the side situation like this, where I made a mess a little bit. So, as I said to you before, that the rubber uh, looks like a blue tuck, and that's it. <laughs> it's an art rubber, and I I tell you which one I'm using. Uh, it's um, yeah. Oh, sorry. It's a Faber Castell and uh, it's called Needable Art Eraser. Here we are. And it works, miracle here. Watch. Okay, let's do it. Boom, boom, boom. Uh huh. All done. There's one little mark in here we don't want. Oh, it just, you can go gently around it. And um, in my like, okay, so we're gonna just uh, clear this up, and there's still a lot of work, but I probably will be done for today, I think. Just a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and I definitely oh, 
Oh, I'm so tempted to do his ears now. So let's do it together. So for the ears, I am going to use a black colored pencil. Let's have a look. All oh, this little tiny hair. Um, you're welcome to do it with the um, pastel pencils if you want to, but I find out with the details like this the best are colored pencils. Look at the direction of um, the hair. It doesn't have to be perfectly ideal. At the end of the day, this photo is a guidance. And we're creating our own meerkat, yeah? He may be a bit different meerkat. It doesn't have to be meerkat, which is on a photo. We're using it as a guidance. Um, Okay, here I want to show you one more thing. First of all, before going to the thing which I was talking about, I want to magnify and see. I think he's got a bit of hair here. That's it. And that's it. Again, on a lighter paper, we'll have to think about if he's got a light hair sticking out, we'd better do some duck first, like this, and like this. And on the top of them, we can go with the light one. But what I wanted to show you is one more tool, which I didn't use. And I use it quite rarely. It's another rubber um, tool blender, but it's really, really hard. It's um, it's just literally for fine details. I'm using it, and it's got very sharp, like thin corner. And because I don't like the look when it is just like pencil, you can see that it's kind of grain look. I like smooth look. And it is smooth. If we look at the meerkat, all this hair are very smooth. But if we will take uh, the other tools, the other blenders I showed to you, they're not gonna, they gonna kind of ruin this. We need very firm and thin blender, and we're going on the top of this hair to create nice soft look. Okay. Again, um, how I discovered this blender is just I was, you know, shopping and uh, buying different dot things and then I ordered this one. I thought, oh, I'll have a look what kind of blender is this and I discovered that it's very good to blend these tiny details. Okay, so we will make him a little bit of a hairy now, and I can think I can get a bit more highlight in here, and a bit more highlight with his eyebrows. And obviously the highlights will go here as well. A um, more brighter look with his um, fur, which is going here. But I'm not sure whether I'm going to be able to achieve it with this pencil. 
some of the pastels are giving you a brighter look than the other ones. You will learn it and I'm afraid I wouldn't be able to tell you all the, like you know which would give you the best color. It is something you will learn yourself. You will kind of know every pastel, how it does go on the paper. Sometimes even the same brand will give you a different results. I mean you would take the same brand pencil and you think oh it's really soft and nice so I can create a very nice rich color with this and then you take the same brand pencil but another color and it's not like this. I mean it, it's just um, much harder it doesn't go like this so I don't know. I'm not sure how does it work why it does it work like this. May maybe some pastel pigments are, you know, not as soft as the other ones. And just at the moment I'm just like, you know, looking at the um, areas um, which are darker, which are lighter. And I definitely need to do more, more uh, lines in here. Right, 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 a bit more highlights in here. Don't forget about the trick when you look through the narrow eyes, you can see easier the lighter and the darker areas. Sometimes when you're just normally looking at something you don't see which area is darker or what, which one is lighter. But if you like narrow your eyes you, you almost see straight away the shaded area. Well I I do. Hope you do. Um, now here I can see more clearly his chin area. And for this reason I think I'm just gonna smudge this part. Say, so for example, if I would get my eyes look through the narrow eye, I will see. That this area, which I'm now making darker, is darker. And I'm not using any blending tool. I'm using my finger just because I don't want to lose any color. But what I want to do, I noticed that on the chin at the bottom here, he's got this light hair. That's how you can see that this is his lip. That's why I said, if you will choose the good photo to draw with, you magnify it and you perfectly see the details. And it's make your life so, so much easier. Right, okay, I'm going to be finishing for today in a minute. And uh, uh, that's lovely. He's got some, if you'll have a look under his chin, he's got some... <laughs> A little like a, a what is it? I don't know what it is. Um, a birth mark? It's not, it's not a birth mark, <laughs> but it's like a sport with two hairs. It's like you know, probably a chin, a chin of a meerkat. Is it supposed to have a spot in there? Probably does. Oh, anyway, so right. Um, I will. See you in my next lesson and we'll carry on working with this lovely meerkat. Um, well done. Everybody well done. See you next time.